I just published a GPT that'll save you so much time when creating consistent characters in Midjourney. It writes every Midjourney command you'll need, so by the end of this video, I'll show you how to go from a basic idea to a fully fleshed out set of character references. And finally, consistent pictures of your character created in any scene you want, all without writing a single prompt. If you have access to Midjourney and ChatGPT+, you're ready to get started using my brand new tool. The first link in the description is my GPT, which I'm calling the Glibetry Consistent Character Assistant. This is the workhorse that's going to make this so easy. To get started, you'll need an idea, and you'll use it to generate your first mid-journey command. The character we're making today? Some of you might remember from one of my first mid-journey tutorials. I named her Hannah, she's an elf princess, and I made her with purple hair. I could explain those three things, the basic description to my GPT, and it would do a great job, but to enhance the idea just a little bit more, I'm gonna be adding a couple details. I'll say that she's an elf princess with regal clothing that has gold trim, purple hair with flowing ringlets, light blue eyes, and a friendly demeanor. Let's put a space in light blue and click enter. What you see is ChatGPT writes a prompt. If you click copy right here, and paste it into Midjourney. I'll speed this up if I have to. You'll end up creating a grid full of this character from slightly different angles or expressions. What you'll see later is that these will be perfect for Midjourney to use as references or C refs. So say hi to Hannah. Obviously your results won't always be perfect the first time. So you might need to regenerate a few versions of that same command in Midjourney. That would be hitting this button rerun right here. Or you could go back into my GPT and ask it to make changes to your character just by having a conversation with it, which is something I would do if I see the result and decide Hannah should look totally different than this. Even though Hannah's ears in this one look wild, the five images right here are just fine with me. So once I have a grid I like, I'm just gonna go ahead and click upscale. Upscale Creative is just fine, and all we're doing now is getting a high-resolution version of Hannah. Let me cut to when this finishes generating, and there you have it, five versions of Hannah that look hopefully pretty interesting. Her face might be a little wonky in these, but I do appreciate that we have a pointed elven ear, and the important thing is that these are consistent each time, so that every time Midjourney generates the next result, it has several options to reference how her chin should look, how her eyes should look, how her nose should look, and how her pointed ears should look. So, what I'm gonna do next is split up this grid into five separate references. If I click into here, you'll see I've made the image a little bit bigger, and now I'm just gonna open up my snipping tool right here, click new and create the first reference. This will get pasted right into the slash imagine box here. I'm speeding up through this, but I'm just doing the same thing five different times so that Midjourney will have a bunch of C refs to use. Before we finish, all I wanna do is click this button, use as character reference, for each of the images. Then of course, make sure this lock button is set so that the references stay in mid-journey through each of the prompts I generate. Speaking of prompts, to actually get prompts, we can jump right back into my GPT. Just to save time, I've prepared what I'm asking my chat GPT to do at this point. All I say is please create five prompts so I can put this character in a bunch of different scenes. Describe her as a purple haired elf princess with blue eyes and bright regal flowing robes. I'll generate this and it'll come up with five prompts for me. Now that we have a bunch of these, I'll go ahead, click copy, and start pasting them into Midjourney with the character references associated with them. Obviously, you can change the aspect ratios. Maybe we'll do this first one at two thirds. Um, we'll come in, grab the second one, and maybe do this one in a more landscaped mode. Go back, number three paste it in. Obviously, this is very, very quick. Maybe this one can be square. Click enter. Number four. Actually, let's see. Let's watch these generate because I'm sure they're cool. They're coming in fast. And number five. And now 
we have all of these prompts completely generated to create a bunch of versions of my character. If we sc scroll through and see the prompts that uh, ChatGPT created for us, you'll see the prompts are kind of complicated. I've carefully set up my GPT to write prompts that generate characters at the same level of detail every time and with the same kinds of biases no matter what scene they're in. So as you see these images, they don't necessarily match the C-refs we created, but they do, to a certain extent, match each other. I find I reliably get at least one matching character out of the four images Midjourney generates every single time. Often, more than that, these are looking really good. But one thing you will notice is that all of these that we've created are actually close-up portraits. You'll notice close-up photo has been in every single prompt that was created. There's a reason for that. It's very good for consistency, and you might be concerned that it's not good for creative freedom. Luckily for us, Midjourney has a few more features that can help you get back that creative freedom. If we click into one of these images that we like, you'll see what they are. They are pan, zoom, change aspect ratio, and vary region. As long as you don't regenerate and override the consistent face of your character, you'll be able to totally transform the composition of your image. We'll take this one to give you an example. So obviously, if we want to see more of Hannah, we could pan down and it'll start generating more of Hannah for us to see, as well as more of the scene itself. Maybe one of these is close to what we're after, but now what we want to do is zoom out. Let's click this button to zoom out by a factor of two. We'll watch it generate. You'll notice it keeps this aspect ratio, but it puts the part of the image that we liked right in the center of the screen. We can open one of these up and you'll see how this image has started to totally transform. As you start to do this, you might notice that defining traits of your character starts to appear in other places in the image. This is a great time to go ahead and click Vary Region to remove some of those features that we don't necessarily want on other characters and also remove the dash dash c ref part of the command right here and regenerate the image with the changes that we had in mind. You'll see generating this will give us a much cleaner result that most likely doesn't turn the army behind her into pointed-eared elves as well. Maybe I like this quite a bit, but actually instead of having Hannah here centered in the middle, I want to put Hannah over on the left. So we can click change aspect ratio, click start. Obviously you can change where she starts in the image and extend the image a little bit more to have a slightly more unusual composition for the scene. Obviously, because the C-Ref is out of the image, it won't try to throw Hannah onto the other side as well, and it could become a really interesting and cohesive image. And now that these have finished, you can see the power of starting up close and zooming out. We generate Hannah's face at the highest level of detail, and then zoom out to create the scene exactly how we want it. Obviously, you could repeat that sort of process for versions of the character that look a lot like that one. This one here is definitely a great candidate. But what you can also do is go back to ChatGPT and ask for more prompts. Maybe you could ask it to write you five more prompts for Hannah in royal decorated rooms, each themed after different types of elemental magic. And of course, my, my custom GPT will create prompts for those very scenes. We can begin generating them. And as we see these generate, they're pretty reliably quite a lot like the same character. I can keep going back and forth and use these character references and brand new prompts to show you all of the amazing images I can get of this character in all kinds of different scenes. While I edit this video, I'm sure I'll generate more, but before we go, I want to point out that the alpha site makes organizing C-refs so simple. There's no link need to save all these links to the images. If you lose them, you can just go back to any image you've generated, click use prompt, and voila, there it is. I've also gone into my archive and 
I've organized different characters that I've started creating into different folders so that I can find them again. Like this monk has C refs I've created ages ago, and it would be very easy for me to create more versions of him as well. Obviously, they also show up if you go into this plus, and these grids I found to be very effective at creating some really great and interesting characters. If this guide was a little too fast or advanced, or maybe you want to refamiliarize yourself with this new mid-journey UI, well, do I have the video for you. Here, I go into detail about every important feature you need to take advantage of the power of version 6, and I show you all of that in less than 15 minutes. If you haven't seen this one, you're in for a treat. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you there.